justice will be brought before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span. What you did in the open and what you conceive. From big to small. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode in our series on the journey to the afterlife. We discussed previously the journey of the soul after death, and we spoke about the day of resurrection, and we began discussing the topic of the hellfire, and then we began discussing the traps of shaitan that lead to the hellfire. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the traps of shaitan. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the traps that lead to the hellfire. Today inshallah ta'ala we want to continue talking about these deceptions, these traps that are all around us. Every single one of us, all of the creation, all of uh, mankind and the jinn that can fall into these traps. Every single one of us could fall into these traps. And so we need to be aware. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us again and again, Inna shaytana lakum aduun fattakhiduhu aduwa. Verily, shaytan is an enemy to you. So take him as an enemy. How do you take shaytan as an enemy? You have to learn what he tries to do. You have to learn his tactics. Learn his deception. Be aware. Be wise. Seek knowledge. Knowledge dispels ignorance like nothing else. The same way that water extinguishes fire. And so knowledge is power. So when we talk about the traps of shaitan, this is a power, this is a weapon for you, a shield for you against these traps of shaitan. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us strong in our faith. So we discussed in the previous episode that the biggest trap of shaitan that he tries to employ against all of mankind and the jinn is the trap of kufr and shirk. If he cannot get you to commit kufr and shirk, he tries to get you to commit bid'ah, reprehensible innovation, to worship Allah in the incorrect way. If he cannot get you to do so, he tries to get you to commit al-kabar, the major sins. And the next trap is al-sagha'ir, the minor sins. And the next trap after that, we mention if he cannot get you to commit minor sins, or at a certain time, can I get you to commit a minor sin? He will try to make you waste your time with permissible actions. Mubah. But it's not rewarding. So he will get you to waste your time through any kind of permissible entertainment or leisure such as games or such as board games or video games or movies or TV shows, something that does not have any haram element in it, but something that wastes your time, such as sports, as we mentioned in the last episode. Now, these things are not haram, but they are wasteful in their time. They are mubah, they are permissible. Now, if at a certain time, shaitan can I get you to commit any of these traps, even wasting your time? The next trap of shaitan, as we mentioned, is he tries to get you to do the lesser of two good deeds. So you can do one act of ibadah here, another act here. He tries to make you do this act of worship, so that you don't do this act of worship. And this happens all the time. And sometimes you don't notice. So the way to fight this trap of shaitan is to seek knowledge, to understand what is more rewarding, what is less rewarding. So we mentioned the difference between the alim and the abid, the scholar and the devout worshiper. So the scholar, the difference between him and the devout worshiper is like the difference between the Prophet ﷺ and the lowest person of the entire ummah. So we gave the example of having the option when you wake up in the last parts of the night, you are able to get up and pray. But shaitan tricks you or whispers to you or tells you, I'll just recite Qur'an. So you decide just to read Qur'an instead of waking up or instead of standing up to pray. Whereas the prayer to Hajjud is much greater than only reciting the Qur'an. And so we also mentioned the example of learning the sunnah. When you learn the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and you have this knowledge, you're able to tell what is more rewarding and less rewarding. And so for example, if it's time to go pray, you hear the adhan from the masjid, and it's time to go pray. Or you know that it's time for the adhan in the masjid. And then you're very hungry, you decide that you want to eat, and the food is ready. Is it better to eat the food or to go and pray? So you remember the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when, in which he said, if food is presented to you and the prayer has been established, then start with the food. So the Prophet ﷺ gave us this hadith, gave us this narration, this incident. And so you have 
this uh, food in front of you and you have the option to go pray. But if you go and pray and you ignore the sunnah, if you go and pray, you're going to be hungry and possibly thinking about the food, thinking about coming back to eat. So it's better to follow the sunnah, eat the food, and then go to pray if you can catch the prayer. This is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there's more, action, more reward in following that action. So shaitan might trick you to do one thinking that it's better than the other. This is where knowledge comes in and knowledge has a huge role in this place. Now, another of the tactics of shaitan that he employs against the greatest of believers, and he does this to as many believers as possible, is that he will try to ruin your acts of obedience to Allah. He will try to ruin the good deeds that you've already done. So you already did a good deed. Now shaitan is trying to ruin it for you. How? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who have believed, speaking to us, لا تبطلوا صدقاتكم بالمن والأذى كالذي ينفق ماله رئاء الناس ولا يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not invalidate your charities. Do not invalidate your charities with reminders, with reminders as injury or reminders or injury as does a person who spends his wealth only to be seen by the people, رياء الناس. And this person does not believe in Allah and in the last day. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَثَلُهُ كَمَثَلِ صَفْوَانٍ عَلَيْهِ تُرَابٍ فَأَصَابَهُ وَابِلٌ فَتَرَكَهُ صَلَّى لَا يَقْدِرُونَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ مِمَّا كَسَبُوا وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الْكَافِرِينَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this person is like the example of a large boulder or a large smooth stone upon which is dust and it is hit by a downpour that leaves it bare, leaves it empty. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they are unable to keep anything of what they have earned. This good deed that they have done, they invalidated it. They invalidated it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not guide the disbelieving people. Now, an act of worship that you have already completed, can it be ruined? Absolutely. You could ruin your act of worship. And so this has to go back to the issue of intentions. And we, sp we spoke about intentions in an entire episode. The issue of sincerity. So one of the biggest goals of shaitan is to mess with our intentions. To meddle with our intentions, our niyyah. So he wants you to feel, first of all, like you're not being sincere to Allah. This is one of his tactics. So you're doing ibadah, you're praying, and he'll come to you and whisper to you and make you think, I'm doing this to show off because somebody's watching me. You're praying or reading Qur'an and somebody's looking at you, shaitan will tell you, cut it short because people are watching. So he'll mess with your intentions. And one of the traps of shaitan is after you've already finished the good deed, he tries to make you change your intention, tries to make you show off to the people. So you might be in some sort or platform of da'wah, for example. You might be benefiting people. Maybe you work with an organization that benefits people. And you might be doing a lot of khayr. And shaitan will come to you and try to make you feel like you're showing off or try to make you show off to the people, to love the praise of the people. So your intention begins to change after you started the good deed. So make sure to be aware of this trap of shaitan by renewing your intention constantly, by seeking knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by making dua all the time, making dua as much as possible for shield, for protection against the shaitan. Now my dear brothers and sisters, if shaitan is unable, unsuccessful in any of the traps that we mentioned, all of these traps that we mentioned, if he is completely unsuccessful, what does he try to do next to the believer? Listen carefully. The scholar says that he will try to make an all-out attack, a complete direct attack against this person. So if someone gets to this level, a scholar gets to this level, they will be tested severely, very severely. And when somebody's faith or iman is at this level, then the test will become serious. So an example of this is Umar radiallahu an. Umar radiallahu an was at a level in which shaitan could not even get to him. Shaitan could not come to him anymore. And so the shaitan will try to employ his followers of the man and the jinn, of human beings and the devils, to attack this person physically, to harm them physically. So what is an example of this? An example is when Umar radiallahu anhu was stabbed. He was stabbed by the Majusi man with a poison dagger. He was stabbed while he was praying Salat al-Fajr. So shaitan employed one of his own followers to go and commit a crime to physically attack this righteous person. This is one of the tactics of shaitan against the most righteous of people. The Prophet ﷺ said, Islam began as something strange and it will go back to being something strange. So give glad tidings to the strangers. So all of the people who have reached this level, the people of immense knowledge and devout 
worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were tested. You look through the seerah, you look through all of our history, our tarikh, you see that anyone who reaches this level has been tested. And so many of them have been, for example, thrown into prison. Imam Malik was beaten. Imam Ahmad was in prison so many times. Imam uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah, went to prison most of his life. Most of his life. So many of these scholars were beaten, many of them were hurt, many of them were physically harmed, uh, imprisoned, all of these things, because this is one of the traps of shaitan that he will employ against the most righteous of people. They will be tested at a severe level. And we seek refuge in Allah from the traps of shaitan. Now, what if the shaitan is unable with the believer to trap them in any way possible? He's unable to trap them. He proceeds by doing what, my dear brothers and sisters? The shaitan will proceed by turning everyone against this man, by turning everyone against him, by calling him misguided, deviant, mubtadi', innovator. Shaitan will try to warn the people against this man. He's not going to warn directly, he's going to warn through other people, maybe even through ignorant Muslims. So they will say this man is ignorant, this man is deviant, this man is mubtadi', this man is this, this man is fasiq, don't listen to him. So the people will stop listening to this scholar. They will stop benefiting the scholar through the ajin and the scholar will stop benefiting the people because of this trap of shaitan. And the shaitan with this trap is trying to weaken the scholar, trying to disturb the scholars, trying to distract him and waste his time responding to allegations by the ignorant masses. And so Iblis by using this method tries to confuse people's thinking and prevents them from benefiting from this believer because they're so righteous in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he employs his people of falsehood the people who follow the shaitan, the people who don't even know they're following shaitan, and the devils against this person. And he even uses the human beings that are Muslim, that are ignorant. And that's why in our times and even in the past, you see the people who are ignorant, they have jahl. They try to go against the scholars, they try to warn people against the scholars. And yet these are the most ignorant of people, they have no knowledge whatsoever. So they try to attack the scholar in every way possible, and the scholar, the believer at this point, is, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a scholar, but it is usually a very learned person, knowledgeable person. So the believer at this point is at war until they die. This person is at war until they die. And if this person gives up, then this person is hurt. They're injured or they're taken captive. If this person gives up, they're hurt. So this person, the believer, is in a state of jihad, spiritual fighting, spiritual struggle, until the moment they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one of the worst things that could happen to a person if they fall into it unsuccessfully, meaning if they are trapped by shaitan in this regard. And so they lose this battle. They lose this, this challenge. So we're going to take a short break, inshallah ta'ala, and we're going, to, we're going to come back and continue talking about some of the traps of shaitan and how shaitan can be afraid of you if you get to a certain level. Stick around, inshallah, and we'll be right back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Scale of justice will be broke before man. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome back from the break. Before we took a break, we were mentioning the trap of shaitan, in which shaitan employs all of his followers of the man and of the jinn against a person who is so righteous, somebody who is so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and usually this is the one who is very knowledgeable and very righteous and very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So shaitan tries everything possible to attack this person. He tries to make this person confused in regards to their benefit of the people by making the people doubt this person is knowledgeable or righteous. So the people start to warn against him, don't listen to so and so, don't listen to so and so. And so the scholar will be distracted by this trap of shaitan. Some of them will get through it, some of them will not. And so if somebody is taken by this trap of shaitan, they fall captive. And the one who is so righteous and so knowledgeable that they get past this trap of shaitan, that shaitan tries every tactic to physically harm them, everything to, to attack them through the masses, through the people, through their reputation. And this person is in a state of jihad until death. They're in a state of struggling until the moment they return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, can, sh can shaitan become afraid of you? Can the shaitan become afraid of you if you become too pious? If you reach a level beyond that even? Absolutely. And the example we have of this is Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us in a hadith reported by Tirmidhi, most certainly the shaitan is afraid of you, O Umar. Shaitan is afraid of you, O Umar. And in another hadith reported by Al-Bukhari, the Prophet said, I swear by the one in whose hand my soul is in, if he falls on your path, 
He's speaking to Umar. If he falls on your path, then he takes a different path from the one that you are on. So he's telling Umar al-Khattab, if you're walking and shaitan is on the same path, and shaitan notices you, he will take a different path. He will run away from you. He will flee from you. Ya Umar, radiyallahu anhu. Furthermore, a Tirmidhi reports that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Indeed, certainly I can see the shayateen from the mankind and the jinn. He said he can see the devils from the human beings and from the jinn. Most certainly I see them running away from you, Ya Umar. I see them running away from you. They're scared of Umar. They're afraid of Umar because of how pious he is. So Umar will be walking, the shayateen will be fleeing from him. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us this kind of iman, this path of Umar al-Khattab who's following the path of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What can we do? What can you and I do at this very moment? Number one, equip yourself with sincerity, with ikhlas. إِلَّا عِبَادَكَ مِنْهُ الْمُخْلَصِينَ Shaytan cannot affect these people. So equip yourself with ikhlas. Be true to Allah. Be sincere with Allah. Number two, equip yourself with knowledge. Seek knowledge for the sake of Allah. In our times, we have technology. We have the ability to seek knowledge in so many ways. Authentic knowledge, correct knowledge of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number three, and this is very important, implement your knowledge. Implement the knowledge that you seek. Otherwise, that knowledge will testify against you and it will be useless to you. Implement it. Let it enlighten you. Let it change you inside and out, internally and externally. And if you do these three things, you equip yourself with these three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of you. Be sincere and be honest. Be sincere and be honest with Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you and take care of you. Seek knowledge and learn the different dua that you can make, the different prayer supplications that you can make, and the different dhikr, athkar that you can make, the morning, the evening supplications, the shields against shaitan, the dua for leaving the house, coming back to the house, leaving to the masjid, entering the masjid, leaving the masjid, the dua when you wake up, the dua before you sleep, the duas of the morning and the evening. All of these different athkar and adilaya are for your own shield, for your own benefit, for your own protection and learn about the different tra uh, strategies and tactics of shaitan and his followers. So when you're looking around at society, you can identify what is from the shaitan and what is not, meaning what leads to the shaitan's traps and what does not. And my dear brothers and sisters, implement what you learned. Implement everything that you learned. That knowledge will be asked about on the day of resurrection. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you submit to his commandments, he will take care of you. Now, these are the traps of shaitan in regards to priorities. Let us talk about some of the actual deceptions of shaitan. The things we see around us that you might be seeing in society or in your life at this very moment. So one of the specific traps of shaitan is that he will make something look attractive to you. A sin, a sayyah, a ma'asiyah, he'll make it look beautiful to you. Make it look like something attractive, something that you want. So the shaitan says, لَأُزَيِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَأُغُوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ so shaitan is saying, I'm going to make everything distracted or decorated or beautiful for them. Decorated for them. And so I will mislead them through this. So shaitan is saying that he will mislead people by designing things, by making them look uh, pleasant, by making a sin look appealing. So what does he do? Shaitan makes you think of a sin, a masiya, by hiding the bad things about the sin. The disadvantages, the flaws, the disgusting parts of that sayya. He'll make it look beautiful and attractive. He'll make you only focus on, for example, the desire of the sin. So one of the examples that was given by one of the scholars is the children that are born outside of wedlock, outside of marriage. So people who commit fornication a lot, people who commit adultery a lot. So the children that are born outside of marriage, these children usually have lifelong issues that they have to deal with. Usually, but not always. Because divorce is never good. Separated parents is never good. So they're neglected by their parents and they're raised either by a single parent or sometimes by neither by or as orphans. So usually these children have to struggle more than others. And this is one of the flaws. This is one of the bad, the ill of this sin. And it affects all of society. It affects that child and their descendants as well. The Prophet wasallam said, if one of you sees something in another woman, meaning they're enticed by another woman, he says, rush back to your wife. Go back to your wife, for indeed your wife has what she has. Meaning shaitan will try to make you think that there's something out there that you want that you don't have. Something out there in another man or another woman that you want that your wife or your husband do not have. So you'll be attracted to the good thing about this person, but you'll forget that your, your wife or your husband has 
similar things. And you'll also forget that everyone has flaws. So you won't see the other person's flaws. And so everyone will seem better than what they really are because they're foreign to you. And this is what shaitan will want. So shaitan has made that person more enticing to you. The act of sin, the act of disobedience look more appealing to you. Now this also gives us the next trap of shaitan, which is misrepresentation. He doesn't just make it look beautiful, he misrepresents it as something else. He makes it look like something completely different by giving it a good label, a good name, for example. So what does shaitan say? فَوَسْوَسَ إِلَيْهِ الشَّيْطَانِ قَالَ يَا آدَمُ هَلْ أَدُلُّكَ عَلَى شَجَرَةِ الْخُلِّ وَمُلْكٍ لَا يَبْلَى So shaitan is saying, O oh Adam, shall I direct you to the tree of eternity, the tree of khuld? And mulkin la yabla, a, a possession, a kingdom, wealth that will never ever deteriorate, never wear out in quality. So an example of this is to take something like immodesty. So being immodest, being uh, immodest in your clothing and your lewdness and calling it, labeling it as freedom of expression. Freedom of expression. And this is very common in our times. And wallahi, we see some of the worst things happening to Muslims around the world in places where people are saying, freedom of expression, remove your clothing. But the one who covers, the girl who covers, the woman who covers, they'll say, what's wrong with you? Why are you forcing your religion upon us? And all she's doing is she's covering her body. She doesn't want to be immodest. She chooses to value her body and not to be objectified. So shaitan covers one thing and labels one thing as something else, as something less appealing, for example. So women around the world, they, they wear their hijab and they're looked at differently by disbelievers who are trying to attack the believers. So, so society, as the day of judgment gets near, is becoming more immoral. The sins are becoming more widespread, misrepresenting the evil as good. Another example is a person maybe committing a minor sin. Shaitan will tell this person that he has nothing to worry about because it's only a minor sin. So he's misrepresenting this minor sin as something that's not a big deal. It's not bad. So he hides the, the, the bad parts of it. He hides the flaws of the action. So shaitan will come to us and he will rationalize to us our sins. He will rationalize our sins. So for example, somebody who's backbiting. You're talking about somebody else. Ghiba or even Namima. You're talking about somebody else. Shaitan comes to you and he tells you that what you're doing is you're commanding the good and you're forbidding the evil. But sometimes we cause more evil, more harm, and more sins to us and to other people by commanding good and forbidding evil. Through commanding good and forbidding evil. Because commanding good, al-amr bil ma'roof wa nahi al-munkar, it has conditions. So an ignorant person who doesn't know about these conditions will go and do it and cause more harm sometimes. They'll cause more harm than good. And so this is something we need to be aware of. This is misrepresentation of the sin. So shaitan will tell somebody backbiting is good and you're forbidding the evil. Another of the traps of shaitan, specific traps of shaitan, is procrastination and laziness. And by Allah, this is one of the most common and most powerful traps of shaitan. The Prophet ﷺ said, during your sleep, shaitan will come to you and he will tie three knots, three knots, at the back of the head of each one of you. And he will breathe the following words every time he blows a knot. He says, the night is long. The night is long, so keep on sleeping. Sleep and sleep and sleep. He wants you to sleep for the entire night. He blows into these knots so that you'll become lazy. Now, the Prophet ﷺ says, if this person wakes up and remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of these three knots is undone. It's untied. It's gone. If they make wudu, they perform ablution, the second knot is untied. And if they pray two rak'ahs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then all the knots are undone. All three knots of laziness, of sleep, of tiredness are gone. And they get up in the morning lively and in good spirits. Otherwise, they get up in low spirits and lazy. They have, they're going to be groggy and sluggish all day, and they're going to feel lazy. As reported by Imam al-Bukhari. So when you miss Salatul Fajr, it will affect your entire day. When you miss the morning prayer, and shaitan knows this, it will affect your entire day. You'll, you'll be lazy and less productive. You'll be lazy and less productive. So shaitan tries as hard as possible to make people miss the morning prayer, make people miss the fajr prayer. The Prophet ﷺ said, if you miss the morning prayer, then the laziness will last throughout the day. And the Prophet ﷺ would seek refuge in Allah from laziness. So these three knots, they're tied. If you miss the morning prayer, you'll end up lazy the entire day, sluggish the entire day, tired the entire day, and shaitan will have gained a victory over you on this day. 
So Salatul Fajr is one of these examples. As for procrastination, this is one of the major tricks of shaitan. How? He will try to get you to delay your good deeds. You want to become a better Muslim? Do it tomorrow. You want to become a better Muslim? Do it in Ramadan. You want to become a better Muslim? Wait until marriage, wait until you have kids, wait until this, wait until that, wait until the new year. Shaitan will always try to get you to procrastinate. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow might come and you might not rise. Tomorrow might come and you might be dead. You might pass away before tomorrow. So never assume that you will become better tomorrow if you can become better today. Start immediately. So procrastination is a weapon of shaitan. Powerful weapon of shaitan. So one of, the, one of these examples as given by the scholars is someone who has the wealth and the means and the time to make hajj. But shaitan tells them, I'll just do it next year. I'll just do it another time. I'll do it when I'm older and I have more sayyat, for example. And the person dies before they're able to do hajj. But they were able to do hajj. Many years they were able to do it. Another example is delaying your tawbah. Saying, I will make istighfar tomorrow. I will make tawbah tomorrow. I will wait until Ramadan. I will wait until next year. So every time you wait until tomorrow, shaitan has another opportunity to allow you to die in a state of uh, uh, having no repentance. A state of not repenting to Allah. A state of laziness. A state of procrastination. And so fight this trap of shaitan. Fight this idea of dying at any moment without repenting to Allah by repenting consistently and constantly. And so this is one of the greatest traps of shaitan and a person will try to wait until tomorrow and a person does not realize that this trap of shaitan is affecting them because they are procrastinating so much and we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from these traps of shaitan. This concludes our episode for today. We'll join us next time inshallah ta'ala as we continue discussing the traps of shaitan, the specific traps of shaitan and then we will dive into some of the inhabitants of the hellfire and the things that they did that led them to the hellfire. Join us next time inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Your deeds shall then be weighed in a scale. This shall determine if you pass or fail.